incoming lanes. As the suspect's driving grows increasingly erratic, police decide they can no longer just follow and wait. They have to take action, and fast. Troopers get ahead of the truck and lay down spike strips. The spikes may do nothing to the massive tires, but police have to try. Fortunately, the spikes are able to pierce the thick rubber. The front left tire deflates, making the giant rig nearly impossible to steer. After rolling down a slight embankment, the truck comes to rest on a service road. Police pull the suspect out quickly. Now that they can talk to him, it becomes frightfully clear just how dangerous this pursuit was. What are you doing? You be, you be what, still. what are you doing? The insane man didn't even know police were chasing him. When officers deal with someone who is mentally unstable, they have two concerns. Get the spikes down in front of them. They have to keep the public safe from the suspect, and the suspect safe from himself. Although the suspect's skewed understanding of right and wrong made him unable to comprehend the danger he was creating, police were able to stop him and get him the help he needed before it was too late. A suspect on the run is bound to make some mistakes. Some run out of control, some run out of gas, and some just run out of road. Lumpkin County, Georgia. Winding country lanes are no place to be speedy. That's exactly what Deputy Tom Meehan intends to tell this driver. But when he pulls him over for a citation, the suspect makes a split-second decision and slips back onto the highway. The suspect pushes his Camaro to 70 miles an hour, racing past startled motorists. He banks each curb, gaining distance on the cop, feeling invulnerable, convinced he's on a winning roll. But he has no idea that calamity is fast approaching. He loses control and skids toward a van. He had to make a split-second decision between the van and the trees. Ironically, he hit both and lost it all. Manitoba, Canada. An officer's job does not necessarily end at the traffic stop. Have a seat right here. Nobody knows this better than Police Chief David Grant. He's just returned to the station with a DUI arrest. Sir, I have to advise you you're being recorded on a video camera. Okay, you understand that? Although the suspect seems under control, the police chief is about to have a whole new set of headaches. Okay. The officer asks the man a reasonable request to see his license. Just take your driver's license out of your wallet. But it's no small task for this guy. He fumbles and drops his license on the floor. When he reaches over to pick it up, he has a tiny bit of trouble. He even puts a hole in the detention room drywall. The officer rushes over to help the man. Come on. Fortunately, the damage is minimal. Yeah, he broke your glasses. Uh... It takes some heavy effort to get this guy back on his feet. Come on. Let's go. Stand up. Okay, sit down. Then Chief Grant does what he can to repair the damage. Hey, okay. put them on, see if they work. But even though the officer fixed his glasses, this guy is still seeing double. Now that things are back in order, the officer tries to conduct the breathalyzer test. Why don't you stand up here? Use the table to get up here. Can you stand up here? The DUI suspect tries to do here. what he's told. Place your hands on the tape. Come he's just not sober enough. Whoa, 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 whoa. Again, the officer rushes out to help the man. This is turning out to be more work than he thought. You're going to have to quit doing this, you know? No. The police chief wrangles the man okay. back into the room. Put your hands right up here for balance. He can finally conduct the breathalyzer test. I should lean over, 
Take a deep breath and blow into the mouthpiece here. Okay, okay. Come over here, sit down. A few moments later, the man notices he's been injured by the fall. A scraped elbow. Scraped elbow. Yeah. <laughs> the officer gives him a tissue, but the man is too drunk to even hold the hanky. No, 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 no. I'll get it. But this time, the it. officer moves it. quickly I'll get it. and Turn prevents up. another head-on collision. Can you stand up here? This drunk driver could barely navigate around this small ooh, room. Ooh. So you can only imagine the amount of damage he could have caused behind the wheel of an automobile. You're gonna have to quit doing that, you know? Thanks to the help of one patient officer, the only damage done tonight can be fixed with a little spack. When the decision's been made to stop a pursuit by force, an officer is not going to give up, no matter how hard the suspect fights back. Carroll County, Georgia. It's nearing bedtime for most in this small southern town. But it will be quite a while before these officers get to turn in. A man in a stolen sports car is on the warpath. The wide open road gives him plenty of room to move. But officers can also use the empty highway to their advantage. One unit hurries ahead of the suspect to lay down spike strips. Since traffic is sparse, he's free to choose the best location. He sets up and radios dispatch. Dispatch, how far are they from exit one? Yeah. One mile from exit one. Swelling sirens announce the approach of the high-speed runner. The pursuing officers hang back as they near the spikes. The suspect sees the officer's hesitation and punches the accelerator. He raises his speed digit by digit, thinking he's home free but not if police have anything to say about it. Morning. The suspect rolls right over the spikes, a debilitating blow for any car. But moments later, the suspect decelerates, riding on only its rims. The sports car can't get the traction it needs to stay ahead. Police have the suspect right where they want him. A backup unit rushes in. The suspect tries to block him from passing. The officer maneuvers around the vehicle and seizes the moment. He punches the suspect's back bumper. The car fishtails, but the suspect straightens out and pulls away. The officer gets into position and tries again. The second hit barely phases the driver but before he can gain any distance, the officer strikes once more, sending the suspect's car reeling to the shoulder. Once again, the relentless driver straightens out and heads back onto the road. For some reason, he just won't take the hint. The suspect fights hard to hold the wheel, but there's only so many hits one car can take. And this car has reached its limit. The officer's final ram sends the suspect skidding out of control. It flips onto its side and comes to a rest. The madman is finally stopped, and officers rush the car. But now they face a new dilemma. The driver's door is facing skyward, and it's jammed shut. Smoke begins bellowing from the hood. Officers react swiftly. After several agonizing minutes, the door is pried open and the suspect removed. Police are finally able to take the man in. Back at the station, they learned why he acted so irrationally. The suspect is a mental patient in need of a doctor's care. Although police had to knock hard to get through to him, they were able to stop him without serious injury to anyone. Callahan County, Texas. Like a tale out of the Old West, Chief Ronald Young races across the open prairie, tracking down a bail jumper. 
Young joins units from the Clyde Police, along with officers from neighboring county and city departments. It's a modern day posse, intent on bringing the desperado to justice. The subject has a history of drug charges, and the officers expect him to be dangerous. Their suspicions are confirmed as the bail jumper charges officers with his pickup truck. Chief Young and the others whip their vehicles around, kicking up debris. It takes only seconds to reform into a pursuit team. Civilians scramble off the road, giving the officers leeway. Suddenly, the outlaw does something officers aren't expecting. Despite an open highway ahead, he stops. The officers keep their distance and the pursuit turns into a standoff in the hot Texas sun. Give us a truck. Come out of the truck and lay on the highway. Ignoring the officer's warning, the outlaw digs in. Moments later, he draws his weapon. Got a drop, lad. Get out. The officers take cover, and not a moment too soon. The outlaw shoots first, and the officers return fire. Moments after the shooting begins, the outlaw goes down. The officers immediately seize fire. Police and deputies approach cautiously, knowing the suspect could be playing possum. They fan out staying careful not to create a potential crossfire. The suspect still may have some fight in him, and they keep him covered from every possible angle. He's moving, he's moving. Armed with several 45s and 9mm service pistols, plus a pair of 23 caliber rifles, they're ready for any aggressive move he might make. But the man surrenders without further incident. Officers quickly assess his injuries. Where's your hip? In the arm. Medics arrive shortly thereafter. The outlaw is taken in for treatment before he's booked for his crime. Now the only thing left for officers to do is catalog the evidence. This is a Winchester Model 88 caliber 308. Lever action rifle. There's damage to the stock or it appears that a bullet struck it. When desperados ride the highways of Callahan County, Texas, they better know one thing. Lawmen here are organized, armed, and ready to ride. If an outlaw tries challenging officers to a duel in the sun, the lawmen are equipped to respond. And one way or another, justice will have its day. When pursuing a suspect on a crowded freeway, an officer may only get one chance to take action. When that moment comes, he better be ready to strike. Hamilton County, Georgia, barreling through a construction zone, cutting between frightened drivers, a dangerous felon wanted for armed robbery speeds down a congested highway. The roadwork squeezes traffic into two narrow lanes. Major John Davis in an unmarked unit follows the suspect with no way to get ahead of him. Congestion prevents the use of spikes. I'm backing off of him a little bit because this guy's weaving in and out of truck traffic. And the officer is unable to get into position for a pit. The felon guns the Lincoln to 100, but Major Davis follows his every move. Suddenly, the officer sees an opportunity. He manages to pull up alongside the suspect and shoots out the right rear tire. He aces the shot. With one tire shredding, the Lincoln begins to weave. 
crammed in by traffic, he has nowhere to go but into the service lane. Swerving totally out of control, he sideswipes an SUV and spins across the freeway, barely avoiding being crushed by a truck. Oh, right now. Send an ambulance. Fortunately, no one was hurt in the crash. With guns drawn, the officers swoop in on their man and make their arrest. Open that door! Open it! On your face! Right now! Get on the ground! The suspect had been on the run under various aliases. Mark Taylor in one state, Johnny Walt in another. Wanted for armed robbery and auto theft, he was willing to risk everything to get away. With their options running out, Major Davis took a calculated risk and brought the felon's desperate escape to a crashing end. Katy, Texas. Officer James Lieberman races to catch up with a speeding driver. He's responding to a call from Sergeant Hall, who first spotted the man. The suspect runs a stop sign and heads for the interstate. But running on the interstate will take him through Katy's surrounding counties. This means new jurisdictions and more officers joining the pursuit. Sure enough, when the chase crosses into Harris County, a new unit rolls up. The suspect quickly swerves off the freeway. Then he tears right through a red light. He even tries to force officers into a collision with another driver. But city and county stick with him every step of the way. Suddenly, a wall of screaming sirens and flashing lights appears in the distance. The Houston police force joins the chase. With a throng of officers on his tail, the driver should know he can't escape. Still, he's free and running fast. But with each passing second, it seems a new officer joins the chase. Then police come across what they hoped they wouldn't see on the pre-dawn streets. Traffic. Lots of it. This chase has gone too far. State troopers join the chase. The DPS unit moves in fast. The troopers decide to shoot out the suspect's tires. They try to get into position, but the driver matches them move for move. Finally, the trooper outmaneuvers and blows away the back right tire. Another shot, and the suspect's vehicle is crippled beyond repair. With one final cry of desperation, the driver jerks violently to the right. But the damage is done. With both back tires shot out, the heavy sedan can't go on. Sparks shimmer across the pavement, signaling the end of one man's wild ride. The suspect is cuffed and returned to where the whole thing began, the city of Katy, Texas. When this driver made the decision not to stop in Katy, it was one driven suspect against one small town cop. But when his mad dash banded together officers from other counties, bigger cities, and eventually the state, he learned that police work as a team, a team he couldn't shake. When a criminal has 
taken a hostage. Police are put in a difficult situation. They have to stop a violent suspect without harming the innocent party. Colleton County, South Carolina. On an empty country highway, a blaze of lights and the squeal of sirens shatters this quiet southern night. When officers tried to stop this suspect for speeding, he tried to run them down. He tried to hit me, so um, gotta be careful. Suddenly, he finds himself blocked by a row of traffic ahead. There's just one way around, and the suspect takes it. He's going around everybody in the middle. The officers race after him, grinding over the rough ground. Yeah, we've been trying to blow him down. He does everything. An officer sees the opportunity to box him in. But suddenly, a complication. An officer notices a passenger waving frantically through the window. The looks like he's trying to give up. Police can't risk causing a high-speed collision. It might harm the passenger, who may be an innocent hostage. So the officers quickly formulate a new plan. They steer the suspect back into the median, hoping he'll get bogged down in the rough terrain. We may have to stop. The driver strikes back. He rams a cruiser and scrambles over to the wrong side of the freeway. With trucks on the horizon, the terrified passenger pleads for officers to help him. But the driver just goes faster. The watch commander urges caution, worried for the safety of his men. He allows one unit to stay on the suspect's tail while he quickly sets up a roadblock. The commander gets the help of truckers who use their 18-wheelers to build a wall of steel. The police haven't had time to complete the barricade and the suspect gets around on the shoulder. The officer veers off the road. A trucker still getting into position almost slams the cruiser head on, and the suspect slips past. Back on the freeway, the traffic gets thicker. With the passenger at his side, the insane felon weaves between trucks. Driving ever more wildly into the face of death at over 100 miles an hour. The construction zone ahead is about to complicate the madman's already crazed getaway. All right, he's got no choice now, guys. He's gonna have a problem here in this minute. The construction barriers slow him down, and the passenger tries to escape, but he's thrown back in with a sharp turn of the wheel. With a hostage at his side, the driver can't concentrate and barely misses a pickup in the fast lane. He finally loses his patience and orders his captive to jump. The driver slows down and the hostage hurls himself out, tumbling over the concrete in a bone-crunching exit. Incredibly, the man only sustains some bumps and bruises. The passenger fills in the details, which are relayed back to base. Free of his distraction, the driver flies ever faster into the night. But suddenly he does something no one expects. From top speeds of 120, he slows down to a crawl. Not quite sure what the maniac is up to, the officers keep a wary distance. He's at a car right now. He's got his hands up, but I want to tell you what he's trying to do. Ironically, this felon who would stop for no man is brought to a halt when he runs out of gas. Get your hands up! This insane speeder seemed to have a death wish ramming police cars, rushing headlong at a wall of steel, and racing on a dark freeway the wrong way. 
But tonight, death was denied for both the suspect and his hostage. Cottageville, South Carolina. Officer David Hanley spots a motorcycle gang on the move and switches on his dash cam radar. He clocks one of them doing 50 in a 30 zone. As he attempts to pull over the runaway cycle, one of the other bikers tries to pull aside and ends up eating turf. Officer Hanley checks to make sure this bumbling biker hasn't been hurt. You all right? Hanley catches up to the speeder and pulls him over on a narrow dirt road. Knowing that the biker's friends are on their way, Hanley calls for backup. You send another officer this way. I have about four or five bikes pulling up behind me. At first, Hanley finds the reckless Harley rider to be cooperative and polite. How you doing? Pretty good. I'm good. Good. What's the problem with the speed this afternoon? But when his buddies catch up, things take an uncomfortable turn. You all need to stay up there for me. You're on Donnie on the damn road. Oh, he did? Yeah. yeah. Officer Hanley knows that if he doesn't defuse suspicion quickly, mob mentality could take over. How would you run somebody off the road on a motorcycle? Your friend back there what took his spill, went to pull over when he hit the dirt, and I'll have that on video. So, next time somebody ran somebody off the road, we're going to have a problem. His warning manages to cool the gang down. Now that they know the camera is on, these hot-headed hot rodders aren't going to do anything rash. Yeah, I didn't mean to do nothing wrong. I'm sorry. Okay. I really did. When Hanley gets into his car to write the citation, the uneasy riders reconvene to express their anger. This time, off camera. The video is in front of the car. It's not beside it. That's all right. We're cool, y'all. I mean, y'all, what the hell? I ain't done nothing wrong. He never take me to jail. I don't give a Really? Yeah, it's got me pissed off. I'm got sorry. Me pissed off too. Hanley takes control of the situation by bringing the suspect in front of the camera again. When the officer gives him his citation, suddenly it's back to Mr. Nice Guy. Okay, yes, sir. Thank you. All right. You have a safe day. You have a good day. Looking for a place to turn around, Hanley encounters a backup officer and admits how nervous he was. Next thing I know, I got 20 bikers pulling up saying that I ran some guy off the road, made him wreck, and they're all starting to walk around me. Oh, yeah. Heading back out to the main highway, Officer Hanley runs into the biker gang once again, still trying to get their show back on the road. But unable to even get their hogs started, they now seem more like the Three Stooges than the Hell's Angels. Oh, my God which just demonstrates one final function of the dashboard camera. Sometimes, it's good for a laugh. Police cars are built to endure the challenges of a high-speed pursuit, but there are some cars out there that can easily leave a cruiser in the dust. In those cases, officers have to rely on their wits rather than their vehicles. Pickens County, South Carolina. The county's ace team sets up a trap to catch a high-tailing car thief. We need a roadblock. Anybody up there can help us. Moments ago, an urgent call went out from neighboring Clemson Township. These officers are about to learn why Clemson was having so much trouble. The out-of-control outlaw is driving a Porsche, a vehicle tailor-made for a fast getaway. It turns out he stole his Hot Wheels from his own boss. So he doesn't care what happens to his high-performance ride. Be careful, they drive us crazy. This is the toughest kind of crook to catch. A guy who would enjoy seeing his car get banged up. And who isn't afraid to play games with his pursuers. He dares to lose the police on a narrow off-ramp, swerving around an unsuspecting motorist. Ahead lies a stretch of open road. This is where his turbocharged engine can truly shine. Officers struggle to keep up. Speed's now at 100 miles an hour. A trooper manages to pull up beside the target. If he can keep a matched pace, they might be able to run him off the road. 
but this speed demon has already shown the cops he has no intention of letting up. He veers off toward the highway and blazes past an 18-wheeler. Once again, it's clear sailing for the crook, but this time, he gets a little cocky. As he watches the cops in the rear view mirror, he loses sight of the road. And that's when his stolen car suddenly takes him for a spin. Just when he thought he was in the clear, a slip-up threatens to sideline him for good. The troopers see their opportunity and move in. Walk him in here, walk him in. But the dangerous daredevil recovers from the spin-out and gets moving again. He avoids another pit attempt and throws his engine into high gear. He's still going. Now he really feels invincible. Yeah, he's about a quarter of a mile ahead of me. Officers lose track of him. They desperately try to keep up as he whips through a series of quick turns. Turn in something. I got him. I want to the left. He's going back to the highway. But then, just when it seems the rampaging racer has left them in the dust, the troopers finally get a break. Got a red light up there, fellas. Red light. The thief's daring detour dead ends as he slams into a minivan. Totaling his boss's car. He's immediately arrested. Without his pilfered Porsche to carry him, he's not so fast anymore. There's only so much you can do with a fugitive who's not afraid of wrecking his car. Be careful, he's out of fire. These officers played it straight, confident that if they just kept pace, sooner or later, they'd get their man. As for the car thief's boss, it looks like he'll have to find himself a new Porsche and a new employee. When dealing with dangerous criminals, cops give back exactly what they get. If you're polite, okay, yes, sir. Thank you. they'll lend you a hand. I'll get it. Get up. If you're violent, they'll protect themselves. And if you're threatening others' lives, you better watch out. Be careful, they're driving crazy. Because they're not going to give up until they bring you in. Stay with us on 5. Coming up, we've got a night of sport, including Major League Baseball and action from the ITU World Cup Triathlon 2. And that's coming up in just a sec.